Welcome to Thursday Takeaways. This is your essential weekly guide to keep you plugged into what's new in the industry, breaking news, new products, probably some legal tips here, here and there. We want to give you the best resources and tools for you to go out and grow your business and be successful. I am Jennifer Lindsley. I'm one of the attorneys here with the Wisconsin Realtors Association, and I am here on your Thursday Takeaway to give you the short, quick overview of what has changed with the WB11. We've got a new offer to purchase with an optional use date of November 1st, 2019. Mandatory use date of January 1st, 2020. There's going to be loads of resources on our website, including short videos about each and every change in the offer. So I'm just going to give you the really short version, high, high level of what's changed. One, there's a new layout. It kind of flows according to the transaction now so that you are not flipping around saying, hey, the definition of fixtures is way over here on page four. Let's flip to that and look to that. It goes as you would expect, you know, here's included items, not included, and hey, here's the definition of fixtures conveniently located right where it should be where you're talking about it. So that's the, the first change is kind of uh, change in the layout. Next change is there is some modifications to the definitions. So the definition of, for example, conditions affecting the property or transaction was updated to match the real estate condition report. Definition of fixtures was updated to match the definition that we have in the listing contract and buyer agency. There's a clarification that if the seller is going to repair defects after a home inspection, they have to give the report of the work done to the buyer at least three days prior to closing. The old offer said within three days of closing, so it was really kind of ambiguous about when that deadline was. There's a radon testing contingency, finally, that's been added to the offer. So some of you, depending on what other contingencies you use, you may be able to eliminate or reduce your use of addenda with the offer with the inclusion of that radon testing. The financing contingency has been renamed to the financing commitment contingency because that's really what the buyer is obtaining is a loan commitment. So that's been renamed and there's been some tweaks made to the financing contingency, financing commitment contingency. But for the most part, you'll be able to figure out your way through it pretty quickly. Seller financing has been separated out so that if a buyer can't get financing or they don't deliver that loan commitment, the seller they, we can check a box now to say whether the seller does or does not have the right to finance the transaction. There's default deadlines now built into a ton of the deadlines. So for example, in the old offer, the bump clause, there was just an hours for the bump clause. Now there's a 72 built into it. So 72 have left blank. And a bunch of the other deadlines as well, they've got default deadlines built in. Speaking of the bump clause, it's been separated out. So in the old offer, the bump clause was attached to the closing of buyer's property contingency. It's now been separated out, so the parties can get really creative if they want with their negotiation and attach a bump clause to whatever contingency they want. Again, it's, it, the, the bump clause is such a powerful negotiation tool. Breaking it out really gives the parties kind of maximum use of it in terms of crafting the terms that they want in their offer. So that's kind of a cool update. The right to cure, uh, contingency, or the appraisal contingency now has a right to cure, which is also a pretty neat update because in the old offer, if the appraisal contingency was, if the appraisal was just even kind of below the purchase price, the buyer could terminate the offer. Now the parties can decide whether or not the seller has the right to cure. So if the appraisal comes in too low, the seller can propose an amendment dropping the price down to what the appraisal, what the appraisal is. So that's, again, a pretty interesting new, nice new modification to the offer. There's also language now uh, alerting the parties to the Foreign Investment in Real Estate Property Tax Act, which is the acronym for that is FERPTA. Super short version of that is that if there's a foreign seller uh, selling property, the IRS would like their tax money off of that. So the seller says either I'm not a foreign person selling property or I am, and the buyer potentially can withhold, depending, the parties can negotiate this, but basically withhold 15% of the purchase price to forward that on to the IRS just to make sure that they get their tax on that sale. That's a really short version of that, but it's there. Most of your transactions won't be affected by FERPTA, but if you have a foreign seller, then that's going to come into play. And that, that pretty much sums up the changes to the offer. Again, please check our website. We're gonna have little short videos explaining all of the little differences in the offer, and we're gonna have a highlighted version that shows where those differences are all sorts of resources out there to get you up to speed on the new offer. And thanks for joining us for Thursday Takeaway.